Thanks, everybody, for, for sitting in through here, uh, through the break. And uh, I'll see if I can wrap things up a little bit quicker. Shouldn't be too much problem. I don't have um, the code examples, which, uh, you know, generate the excitement. So apologies if this just gets a little bit slow. Um, I'll do my best to, to keep it interesting. Um, I'm actually going to start with a quick introduction to myself because I don't know how many people here know me or know why uh, what I have has any interest at all. So <laughs> if you just bear with me for a second. Um, so my name's and um, Andrew Williams, Andy Williams. Uh, the folk from way back or who <coughs> like to scan through log files of code changes might know me as Handy Andy. That disappeared a few years ago. Um, had uh, terrible connotations <laughs> and it wasn't a great name, so I, I changed that along the way. Um, as was implied by that, I started with the Enlightenment crowd quite some time ago, back before E17 was a thing that people were joking about never being released. In fact, I remember with very great joy the day that the first E17 tarball was dropped onto Raster's file sites and uh, IRC went crazy. Um, and we all celebrated the vision of Linux um, in the years ahead. Uh, and uh, I, I, I truly believe that um, when we saw it, the EFL has clearly emerged over the years since then and, and is, have, has got an opportunity there to, to show people how well things can be done, both from development and from usability and, and creating exciting applications, um, which is what I'd like to, to, to talk a little bit more about <coughs> later on. Um, Back then as well, uh, the folk who laughed when they saw the name, it, it was my fault, usually. Um, sometimes that was even true. There was a lot of learning going on for me. Uh, I was just coming out of university, and there was a huge amount of development at the time. I don't know how anybody ever managed to stay on top of it. Um, also, I was responsible for, uh, or helped with a few things like uh, Getty, uh, for those who remember it, a bit of virtual desktops and configuration stuff. Um, uh, but mods and plugins was where I spent most of my life and uh, the little graphic up there that's terribly pixelated is pretty much all that remains of a working Mozilla plugin for, for viewing edgy files. Um. <laughs> uh, after, um, after a lot of fun working with E as I was at Exiting University, uh, work took over sadly. Um, I've been out in uh, various different places working on server side, uh, doing web apps, security implementations, um, and more recently got into mobile application development uh, which has given me exposure to quite a lot of different platforms, a lot of different tooling, uh, which I'm hoping is, is able to give me a little bit of an idea <coughs> about uh, the, the topic in hand here. Um, and just the last bit for, uh, for history there was the Enlightenment Developer Day last year happened to be in my hometown, so I turned up just to see what was going on and was truly inspired by everything that people were demonstrating and talking about. Um, I was sitting there with, with my Mac, running a virtual machine, feeling terribly not part of the crowd, um, <laughs> not knowing where, where everything had gone wrong. Um, but uh, it, was a it was an inspirational day for me, um, and I felt that uh, e-developer within me uh, reawoke at that point in time. So uh, here I am back again. Um, yeah. <laughs> I feel like e-developers anonymous now, actually, but we're all a little bit public <laughs> about it. Um, so, um, on then with an IDE. I mean, this sounds, this sounds entirely crazy. I, I tell people about it and they laugh. Um, I'm known for liking side projects and the bigger the better. Uh, this has got to be one of those. Um, but some motivation. It, it wasn't just purely I fancied a bigger challenge or that I saw there were only 19 and you clearly need 20. Uh, having Having um, gone through a few of these uh, ecosystems over the last few years, I've learned that they are hard, lots, uh, lots to learn, new platforms, library sets, languages, whatever the semantic is that you're trying to pick up. Um, you need as much help as you can get along the way. And Linux and its, its friends in, in C, C++, adds a little bit of a challenge. Um, the amount of variation there is a fantastic thing, but there are 10 ways to do anything. A few of them will probably be right, but only one of them is the way that we recommend. Um, how do you learn these things um, whilst you're trying to pick up the actual the, the coding? Um, another thing I saw whilst I was away is the platform wars, I like to nickname it. What we're seeing in, in mobile development, um, Kirsten mentioned earlier how quickly things are growing here with the EFL, but um, out in the, in the mobile world, especially Android, 
and iOS things are moving even faster and there is a race to create the best development tools to help people get up and running even quicker and to support the delivery of quality applications which finally users are demanding every day um, and I think that uh, EFL is in a good place to try and support that. Um, uh, so summing up those aims, they're really trying to get people started quicker with the EFL, um, partly uh, for the project and slightly altruistically, but also there's so much for me to learn, I'm trying to find a way to learn it quicker and to reinforce what I'm picking up every day. Um, and another uh, couple of short points there. Um, the last developer day that I mentioned before, and indeed what we've seen already this morning has demonstrated a lot of cool, really slick tools but I found after the last one, and even since earlier points this morning, I can't remember necessarily their names um, or the purpose of one versus the other, and maybe even uh, which file format I would be expecting to open one with against the other. All of these things are, of course, um, improving over time, but they're, they're challenges to anybody who's trying to pick up the, the system. I would like to either integrate or centralize all of these tools in a way that makes it somewhat trivial for people to come along and find out what is uh, the way that things work. The EFL suite is a very, very powerful uh, collection of libraries. I'm sure that everybody here would agree, um, and they can facilitate amazing applications. But which library do I use for what purpose? File system, I need to do something with the file system, but which version of the API and, and which naming convention are we using there? Um, how does a basic theme look? Uh, and uh, the widget systems, uh, not, not going into the history of that one, of course, um, but there are a lot of complex widgets out there that can do amazing things, um, but I'm not entirely sure where to start for the, for the requirements that I have. Um, and how should I format my code? Do I like to use tabs or spaces? Do I need to find all of the right documentation for that? Um, and so to try and get more people directly involved in e-development, uh, EFL development, and creation of apps on the top of that uh, is something that the, the second motivation here is, is summarizing. It would hopefully enable us to get a lot more people um, developing the, on the EFL and building the apps for, for this Linux desktop, which has uh, s um, great promise in, in, in its future here, and also the potential there for mobile. Um, they're looking for a third competitor because Microsoft doesn't seem to be up to the game. Uh, so <laughs> uh, that was the motivations uh, for creating it. Planning such a massive big project, I didn't really know where to start, so I did the great thing that apparently isn't quite as popular as I thought. I went and created a wiki page, um, and that started with a few short ideas, and it became some pretty big ideas. Um, it's now a range of the trivial through to the absolutely um, incredible and potentially impossible, but trying to see what can be done and what people would like. Uh, I spent a little bit of time on IRC as well, talking to people about what they would consider might be required for an MVP, sometimes with a proviso that we probably wouldn't use it anyway, but always with the idea that these things would be essential if you were ever to, to tempt me off my preferred text editor of choice. Um, what everyone really wants. They want the button that says, make the app I wanted to make. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. I think that uh, that feature request has probably been made of every big platform recently, if not um, through history. But how close can we get to that for people? Um, so I split down the features into things that, that made sensible milestones. And we came up with four phases of development of this, uh, which do get rather larger as time progresses uh, in, in, in true uh, agile planning style, I suppose. A basic text editor. Um, doesn't really sound like much, but looking at it as a, a project-based system rather than editing a single file gives you some context of, of a workspace. That was the, the first milestone that I was hoping to achieve. Um, second, being a code-aware editor, where it's, it's a lot more than editing text, but it's not a fully integrated system. Um, third was a basic IDE, uh, which would then start to promote a lot of these uh, great things that I was talking about before. And the fourth being an amazing IDE, that one that's better than all of the others and makes it clear why we did it in the first place. Uh, that's the fourth milestone. Um, I suspect it might be later renamed to the 25th, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Which um, pretty much brings us uh, to the status. How, how is that going? Uh, well, it's just me uh, doing it in the few hours that I can find each month. But uh, 
things are coming along. So in the uh, manner of a, a picture saying a thousand words, here is what it looks like at the moment. Uh, a little bit blurry, but uh, it's all available to go and try out if you want to see it for yourself, or I can run some demos later. The, there's a couple, of, a couple of key things here. Um, it's trying to implement most of the life cycle for, for basic functionality. So we have, uh, he, over here is a little welcome screen. That's what you would see the first time. It's illustrating that you can open an existing project. This isn't something with metadata or requirements. It literally is a directory structure, which all of us will know <coughs> and love by now. Um, or we could create a, a new project over here, which would drop us out to, to this second screen. Um, for anybody who's used the skeleton tool in Git, uh, will uh, probably be familiar with the input terms there. Um, I'm trying to make the use of the existing tools uh, and, and scripts that have already been put together and, and well tested over the last few years. <coughs> uh, from there, we enter the, the main window, windows or uh, plural, however you look at it. That's essentially the, the, the text editor as it exists with a, with a couple of nice things. We've got some, some syntax highlighting there. You can open your new windows and you can organize your workspace uh, in some nice fashions. And uh, trying to demonstrate that other file types could be handled. Images really are the only non-text uh, editing feature in there at the moment, but that's an area that I'm looking to expand very soon. Um, and the last part here, this, this little console, that's the result of tapping the build button up at the top. Uh, you can see the output of what's going on. Uh, with uh, any luck, you'd be able to run it immediately after the build has finished, though that the logic there isn't quite complete yet. Um, and the line in, in red, just towards the bottom there, is indicating, that in this case, a, a warning, but uh, what errors or, or notes, um, and each of the lines that rep represents a problem with your code, you can tap on, and it takes you to the, to the line of code in the right file for you to go and directly fix that problem. <laughs> Um, there's a couple of things I'm working on just now. Um, improving the layout is one of them. Uh, as you can see, there's not really a way to have that file selector uh, open and be able to read all of your code. Uh, so it's only really helping the people that only want to open for a short amount of time. There are some performance considerations that I'd like it to take into account. And this syntax highlighting, which made itself into master probably yesterday morning, <laughs> doesn't really work if you've got more than a couple of hundred of lines in your file. And if you do, you're going to wait for quite a while whilst it figures that nothing's going to happen. Uh, uh, and I'd like the, the overall UI to respond a little bit more to the context that you're in. So things are coming in when you're doing the building and disappear shortly after. And uh, potentially the file selectors and things could be a little bit more intelligent rather than being manual clicking around. But as I mentioned before, this is a project that hasn't had the most amount of time. And I've been using everything that already exists to demonstrate the power of the libraries and the code that's, that's already in place. So with minimum amount of my time, this is, this is the UI that's come out so far. Um, so that's, that's essentially where we are. Where are we going from here? Uh, I would um, very much like to, to tidy up this code and promote it up into the, the apps, main app space uh, rather than in my developer area, create a fab project and actually start tracking issues. It's a text file at the moment and I try to keep it slim so as I don't stress myself out, but there's quite a lot of stuff in there that I'm not really respecting at the moment. Um, I would uh, like to get more people involved in the project. Uh, I think that it's, it's something that's got to a place where there are certain areas that folk could really contribute to and, and help to move it forward. Um, part of the reason that I'm actually showing you all here today, um, the hope that inspiration might hit some of you uh, on the way out the door. <coughs> I'd like to complete this code aware editor phase. Uh, you can see that the, the basic text editor was completed and, and, and dealt with a while ago. The code aware needs a few little bits and pieces um, to bring it up to spec. You can check the wiki for what's missing, but essentially documentation integration, looking to inline error messages and provide a few more advanced text, function, uh, text editing functionality, uh, which at the moment is a, is a bit minimal. Um, after that, the basic IDE, look at that feature set, which is reasonable um, in itself. <laughs> Uh, the types of things that we could get integrated, um, the edgy file editors uh, or um, the th um, theme editors, GUI builders, all of the good stuff that, that you guys have been presenting and that inspired me to do this in the first place. I'd love if, we could, uh, if I could try and integrate those with, with people's help. Um, and then 
number five down here. I did, I did put profit, but that seemed a little bit daft. The, the idea really is, as Carson mentioned um, right at the beginning, we need more developers in this ecosystem to support the, the amazing work um, and, and to create the, the features coming in. And that's exactly what I want to try and support here. Bring new people in to the EFL or to be creating more apps on top of it. Uh, and let's see where, where the, the, the system and the Linux desktop can go and, uh, and what we can do on mobile as well. Um, so that's me. Thank you very much for your time. Any questions at all? At, at the time when I was putting it together, I said, I've got an amazing name, and a few folks went, no, 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 we've, we've grabbed EDI already, just, just go ahead and use it. Um, and I kind of liked it, so I went with it. It may not be inspiring, but it is short, easy to remember, and you can, you can see it. You know where it's come from, and a lot of little bits and pieces I've written in the past, you put some clever names in there, and even you can't remember what they were a year later or, or why you came up with them. Um, EDI, exactly, it, it sticks, it's clear. Um, and in theory, if you only need to remember one, let's remember the shortest one, yeah. and everything else is linking or building from there. You can just call it Eddie. Yeah, Eddie. Yeah, Eddie. 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 yeah my friend Eddie. You can call some like, just call I plan to support Git and SVM. Absolutely. Um, source control integration is one of the items in basic IDE phase, so I'm not looking at it right now. Every part of me wants to put it in right away, but I know that I need to tidy up the, the main workflow, the editing functionality of building and running at the moment, um, and then source control will be sort of one of the next things I'm chasing. I've got a separate file of, of looking good libraries, external tools that would integrate really well, and uh, the eGit's been demonstrated before, and, and there are other exciting possibilities that I would love to do. Um, sort of failed to call it out in any of the slides, but that's one of the things where a really powerful code editor with integrated um, expansion functionality such as Elm code might help us out quite a lot. The syntax highlighting there was put in because I thought probably need something in the meantime. Um, and I don't think that I have the vision of that particular widget to take one into the other, but I'd really like to work with, um, with um, uh, Cedric to, and, and, and Tom to, to see that <coughs> come to life because I think that would be a really interesting project to work on that could be used elsewhere as well. Um, and if you can integrate Git and inline error messages and code folding and documentation suggestions, the world would be a, a happier place. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, thanks very much, guys. <laughs>